You know what they say, first is the worst, second is the best. But I continue to believe the best candidate might be sitting next to me. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best U.S. Vice Presidents. These are the goals and will be the achievements of the Democratic Party. For this list, we're taking a look at every Veep in history and considering how well they filled the role. In terms of what they did on the campaign trail, what they accomplished in office, how they complimented the president, and more. I don't think men running for their lives will be encouraged by firing their commander now in the middle of the battle. Number 10, Gerald Ford. For confirmation as the Vice President of the United States, Congressman Gerald Ford of Michigan. Ford had it tough from day one. Amid Spiro Agnew's tax evasion and money laundering scandals, President Richard Nixon had to select a vice president that would both calm the country's nerves and reestablish confidence. Ford filled this role admirably, as the Republican was relatively admired on both sides of the political spectrum. I'm a Ford, not a Lincoln. <laughs> While the Watergate scandal was already in full swing when Ford was sworn in as VP in December 1973, things worsened considerably following his appointment. As evidence mounted against Nixon, Ford was assigned the near impossible task of staying above the fray. He did so gracefully, ultimately stepping up when called upon to replace Nixon as president in August 1974. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office. Number nine, John Adams. His rotundity, the vice president and Duke of Braintree. <laughs> Second that. <laughs> The very first vice president of the United States, Adams was tasked with establishing the role. True, he was not consulted particularly often by then-President George Washington, and their views may have actually contradicted each other in some cases. However, Adams was a highly influential VP in his capacity as president of the Senate. Avoid any hostilities or any show of support. America must be beholden to no one, neither. England nor France. The Senate's official government website confirms that Adams cast the most tie-breaking votes in history, with roughly 30 separate votes. The vote still stands at 15 in favor, 15 against. With such decision-making power, Adams was able to heavily influence the country's policies during his time in office. He must have done something right. The American people later elected him president, a job he held from 1797 to 1801. I vote for ratification. Number eight, Joe Biden. And I watch this guy. I watch him make incredibly difficult decisions in, in, in incredible crises. And you learn the character and the metal of a man. Unlike many vice presidents, who have a ceremonial relationship with the president but do not take an active role in his decision-making process, Joe Biden acted as a serious advisor to President Barack Obama. We are absolutely thoroughly convinced and optimistic about the prospects of this country. It's reported that Biden purposefully provided opposing views to the presidents, so all perspectives were represented when choices were made. Every morning I've gotten up and I've had some policy concern that's on my mind that I was able to work on to try to change things. He was active in government, heading the gun violence task force, and overseeing infrastructure spending in Obama's stimulus package. What's more, he helped pass the American Taxpayer Relief Act of 2012 and championed reauthorization of his own Violence Against Women Act. If women were the same percentage in the workplace, not even equal pay, just the same percentage in the workplace, the total GDP would be $28 trillion greater. Biden's popularity can't be understated. And in the early 21st century's political climate, that's some accomplishment. That's the unbreakable spirit of the people of America. That's who we are. Number seven, Dick Cheney. In addition to gravitas and experience, Dick Cheney was an effective campaigner starting at the nominating convention. Some would argue that Dick Cheney was the real brains behind the second Bush administration. A few weeks ago, Dick Cheney says he thinks I'm the worst president of his lifetime. <laughs> Which is interesting because I think Dick Cheney is the worst president of my lifetime. Whether or not that's true is debatable. But what isn't is the fact that the 46th vice president of the United States was a key player in the White House from 2001 to 2009. 
bringing with him the foreign policy expertise W lacked. In the immediate aftermath of 9-11, Cheney spearheaded the anti-terrorism movement by asserting that Iraq had WMDs, claiming links between Al-Qaeda and Saddam Hussein, seeing to the use of purported, quote, enhanced interrogation techniques, and by coordinating the war on terror. The uh, Iranians have been very active over the years, pursuing um, the, the title they bear as the world's worst state sponsor of terror. And all of that's been going on now for a long time before we got involved. However, perhaps his greatest accomplishment was balancing the anti-intellectual accusations leveled at President George W. Bush. Loyalty was a lifelong principle of Cheney's. Number six, Harry S. Truman. No, I do not want to be vice president. I'm perfectly happy in the Senate. It's hard to accomplish anything as vice president in 82 days. Unfortunately, that was all the time Harry Truman had before being thrust into the Oval Office upon Franklin Delano Roosevelt's death on April 12th, 1945. Well, then VP's only got two duties, Senator. Getting you no accounts prayed over every morning in the Senate, and God knows you need it, and going to funerals. Before that time, however, Truman was given a tough task in a position he didn't necessarily want and basically shut out of Roosevelt's administration. The so-called forgotten man had to make his mark in the Senate. With the end of World War II in sight, Truman tried his best to position the country for life after war as second in command. And what a life that was. It was a mighty responsibility, but pretty soon, he was called on to serve his country from a higher office. And I'm more than happy to be here and to stay here for the rest of my life. Number five. Al Gore. We know this works. If it doesn't work, you know, we give six months notice and we're out of it. Unlike many other vice presidential candidates, Al Gore didn't necessarily balance out running mate Bill Clinton. He more or less mirrored him. It worked to great effect, however, as the country became enamored with their work as a cohesive dynamic duo. Still, on his own, Vice President Gore established himself as a leader concerned with the environment and technology. Many commend his emphasis on technology as an integral part of the dot-com boom and the ensuing success of the U.S. economy. And of course, one cannot understate Gore's contribution to global environmental awareness. His role in heightening awareness and establishing active initiatives to reverse climate change continues to prove important. But this new power that we have also brings a responsibility to think about its consequences. Number four, Lyndon B. Johnson. We have to come up with some kind of plan or incentive to perfect our democracy. While his tenure as President of the United States has been highly scrutinized, Lyndon Johnson's time as Vice President is largely recognized as successful, as he was instrumental in increasing the responsibilities ascribed to the post. Most Americans want a decent home and a decent neighborhood for all. And so do I. History books suggest Johnson's relationship with the Kennedy brothers was strained. So, basically to keep him out of their way, the VP was named head of the President's Committee on Equal Employment Opportunities. It was here that Johnson established his legacy, as his work on the committee served as the foundation for his role in passing civil rights legislation as president. LBJ also convinced JFK to put a man on the moon, which also, importantly, came to fruition. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind. Number three, Richard Nixon. Listen, I don't want a president uh, who's warm on the outside and warm on the inside too. Johnson's presidency may have been scrutinized, but there's no beating the controversy elicited by President Richard Nixon. Even so, his work as vice president was impressive. Called, quote, the first modern vice president, Nixon held an advanced advisor role in Dwight D. Eisenhower's administration, attending cabinet and National Security Council meetings. When Eisenhower suffered a heart attack in 1955 and was out of commission for six weeks, Nixon filled in seamlessly. It takes quite a, an effective speech, may I say, to come across. His lasting legacy as VP, however, was his work abroad. Nixon established strong bonds with various foreign countries, especially China. Also memorable was his time in the USSR, where he famously debated Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev on the advantages of capitalism versus communism. There may be some instances, for example, color television, where we're ahead of you. Number two, Walter Mondale. 
Mondale's name may not be the most memorable on this list, especially considering he served under one-term president Jimmy Carter. Nonetheless, he's widely regarded as one of the most important vice presidents in America's history because of how he changed the role. And what did you do right after the election? You went out and tried to cut $20 billion out of Medicare. Originally, the Veep was essentially a figurehead. Many VPs on this list had to work very hard in the Senate to make an impact, but Mondale directly worked with the president. He was the first with an office in the White House, the first to receive the same intelligence briefings as the president, and the first to engage in weekly lunches with the commander-in-chief. Only since Mondale has the vice president held any real power. At that time, it was, uh, it was fairly easy to put together uh, coalitions. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Number one, Theodore Roosevelt. A rugged cowboy with a love of political reformation, Teddy Roosevelt followed an interesting trajectory to the vice presidency. Popular with his constituency as governor of New York, but not with the state's Republicans, Roosevelt was named as William McKinley's vice presidential candidate ostensibly to get him out of New York politics and into a job that had very little power or influence. You think of Jefferson as America's Renaissance man, but it's really Roosevelt. However, true to his nature, Teddy proved he had both those attributes by campaigning extensively for McKinley nationwide, making almost 500 stops in 23 states. His famous energy lit up the campaign trail and was a major factor in the Republicans winning the election. It also proved valuable when Roosevelt was forced to replace McKinley as president following his assassination. TR thought the president should do anything the nation required unless forbidden by the Constitution or the law. He was an activist like this country had never seen, and that's why they call him the first modern president. Do you agree with our list? Who do you think was the best vice president? I will write to the Congress and demand my immediate recall. For more political top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com.